Hello, I'm Jason Bridge. So this week's Woodwork and Wisdom, I've been assigned to make a tabletop. How difficult can it be? So we have a pile of wood. You just cut it up, plane it, glue it back together, sand it. How hard can it be? Hmm, okay. Now, this reminds me a little bit of a job I used to have to do. So before I came here, I worked as a furniture maker and kitchen maker. I remember one task and I clipped my thumb, my thumb, on a saw blade. Why? What was I playing with? A plank of oak of about 10 feet long, 18 to 20 inch wide, 2 inch thick to make a cornice. In reality, exactly the same as I've got on the floor in front of me. So, what was the problem with doing this? I tried ripping it down the rip saw. Wouldn't think that caused an issue, but it's just one person, so I struggled to lift the weight. Balance it, try and rip it down, trying to counterbalance it, falling off the back of the saw. It bounced a little bit, pulled my thumb back across the blade. When I think about it now, what was at fault on this? The saw, lack of extraction, three or four different things that could actually lead to part of that problem. My actual fact, when I think about it now, the task. What I was trying to do, shouldn't have been doing it by myself. So, leads nicely to what we've got here. We have a nice table saw in here. We could give it a go. We could try and rip down. There's more than one of us here. Can't be that difficult. But you might not have that scenario at home. So how can you break something like this down that's quite heavy, make it into manageable bits so you can put it through your planer, get it machined up, get it to that task, and keep your fingers and everything else. All right? Weird little thing. So the safety bit's the paramount bit for this. Some of it, about, in reality, as we've said, this is 9 to 10 feet long, 18 to 20 inch wide, inch thick it's pretty heavy even though it's dry it's got a bit of weight to it english wood has a weighty edge if you go buy it from a sawmill so you might find it's not square both sides you're gonna to have to square something up so how can we do that we can cross cut it so the board actually what we want out of this and i've kind of cheated because we've done a little bit of prep i want to have something oh, a bit like that that we can put for the planer so we've got one Oh, let's quickly move this one. We want the plank underneath. You're starting to get an idea of what we're doing now. Two. So first task with this of the job will be the aspect that we can break it down into those manageable bits and plane it up. So we can lose the off cuts a second. Gonna carefully put them out of the way. We might get something out of that. I mean, we were assigned, uh, uh, had a conversation about the fact, could we make something out of off-cats? <laughs> and uh, the guys that know me well enough know that I don't actually produce many off-cats. Okay, so we have our plank. Bit of a crack in this one. I have to see what we can do. I want to flip this and go have a look. Try and see what it's doing. Um, Length-wise, first thing. Have a knot in here. Oops. Which is there from memory let's have a quick measure of the planks i've got in front of me so we just rip those off about 90 inches that is overall so i just want to check we're about the same place down here we're not far off we're down there that's the sort of length we want going to be obviously fractionally smaller when we finish that give me a guide point of where i've got to cross cut it now, some of you might go hand saw, skill saw. I'm going to use a guide rail saw. Hand saw would be slow. You could possibly work with jigsaw, but it's not going to give you a nice straight line. So my guide rail, hopefully, I can put them up on there. Just checking where I've got that. How about I angle it a little bit would be good. Give me a short rail for a minute. So our guide rail saw will fit onto the rail track. Let's lay them down on here, you'll probably see it a bit better. Runs on the groove. So that will help guide the saw. From quick glances, I can square it up. Checking where I've got my pine block in underneath to make sure I can get the clamp in. The saw edge will be right level with the side of the guide rail. What I do with the pine blocks we put underneath just allows access to get that clamp in and do it up. Jump the board. Oh. Just gonna 
move that back in a little bit. Got to see where I can get my clamp. Throw it in. Move that pine back and about a bit, a little bit. Set that up now. I'm jumping back over because I want to see where I am this side more than anything. Screwing up. I've come just beyond my pen line. I can always make things shorter. Difficult to make it longer if you cut it too short. Just got to get that clamp. Just got to get to it now. That's better. Okay. So we're on, we're fixed. Guide rail saw. So we're going to use Festool guide rail saw. That will obviously go on our track. Go along. If you watch the videos the other week we did on the pallet wood project, and I know a few made some nice comments, so I've been looking at those. Used exactly the same saw. So I even used it as a decorated item. So definitely like my guide rail saw, one of my favourite items at home. Done numerous jobs with this. Okay, so, glasses, where are they? They're there. Get it the, set the depth now. I know from thinking this isn't going to quite go all the way through. Our board is about 55mm thick. We're using the guide rail, we lose about 5mm of thickness, so we actually come down to about 50mm depth for cut. We're also going to do it in a couple of passes. Why do one big heavy pass? So I can set the guide rail to about halfway, 30mm. That'll give us a, the scope. It should probably manage it in one cut, but it'll be quicker and easier to do it in two. Less effort, less force. So, on. Turn it down. Move on. Jump. Drop him down a bit. I come all the way down. Let's down to there. So, about halfway at the moment. Okay, getting a little bit of pinch on the board now. I expect this, if I go to the far end, just a little bit loose now. Now I've angled the pine block in underneath, so it diagonally comes across, so it's actually supporting across the board. All right, so it's actually across here. That helps support it, so I can actually take that clamp back off. And I said to you, I know I've got about three or four mil that I can't quite get to like that. Let's take the other one off. Bounce around the canvas a minute. Just trying to see how much there is. Got to think about how I support it. Now I could go through the guide well saw as the saw by itself. Or maybe for what it is. I did say it's not a lot. I'm trying not to cut the pine batten up in underneath as well. Japanese saw, there you go. Now I know there's a bark insertion on the other side, so let's pull that off. That's got that. I mean, I just want to get on here, let's move that. Got a little bit of sharp edge. Let's lose that. I think you can see it. One there. Okay, good. Now, we need to break this down a little bit. Again, we're going to use the blocks to help us. Oh, turn them up on edge. Just kind of a quick assessment of what's going on in this. Got this big crack coming down through. Going to lose a little bit of material on this. So I've got to start to assess six inch there, just over six there. Okay, let's try and see six and a half, six and a quarter is there. That lines up with that nicely. And as we said, we're going to lose a little bit. So I can take some of this crack out. So we want to rip this down. One there, let's just check. I'll go the other way, a bit wide there for what I want, so we'll cut that into two probably in a minute. 
So I want to rip this down so we can use the same setup with a guide rail. Now I've got long rail that I've already put together. This is the case of joining two rails together to make up one long one. I think with where I want to rip, I'm going to have to turn this round. But let's do the far side first because it's in the right position. Just again now trying to judge and I'm looking down this where it looks straighter what we can get a little bit of sapwood here just touching it and then I could measure back to our line we've got so we've got 85 mil there more down here well that's good because that comes over to the crack so I've got a little bit more distance 70 80 I'm just looking at where those cracks are to try and work around them get the best out of the board so again guide rail put on clamp that down so I'm going the far end so actually with this I'm not doing too much heavy lifting not moving this about so I saw then we're going to do the same as we just did let's set a depth stop about halfway so quick movement 30 mil Hold the cables. Back down to the other end. Drop it back in. I get a few of you going to go, couldn't you do it in one pass? You could, but it's going to take a lot more effort for me to push it. There's more resistance. How much effort does this take just to do a couple of passes? Okay, good. Jump the cable. Let's undo that clamp now. Undo the one down the other end. Now the joy with this, like I said, is I'm not having to move the board about. Getting out of that manual handling habit. Minute little line of holding that. So we take that off. We've got about a three mil strip at the bottom. So what I've done is not going to hurt or break down that line nicely. Okay, next cut. Let's have a quick look. Need to pull those clamps right out. I'll take that one off. Move the saw and the hose just for a second so I can get along. Take that one out. Now we know we've got one in here. I can line that up. A bit difficult to measure that one because it's actually on the far side of the board overhanging what would be better carefully turn that around now just to double check while i look at this side has a sawn edge from the sawmill it's quite straight so i can use that as a measuring point now and that one over got my pen line which is back in here going to double check the one down here now that looks good line up and this will break it down nicely on that crack a little bit so we can machine that out that's good so guide well again let's put it down a second come round bring it back again halfway I know it's about 30 so quick stop move down through I 
of Pi 1. Now next thing on this board, if I jump back over you can probably see me a bit better, okay? This board on here is actually cupped in shape across the width, so it's a bit curved this way. If we're looking underneath or even feel underneath, I can feel there's high spots or low spots where it's not hitting the pine button. You're a bit angled on your camera down the end, but it'll be okay like so. Just gonna have a quick look in underneath. We've got a high spot in the middle. So hitting either side, not in the middle. I take some wedges, I can plug the gaps. In reality, either side of where I've got my saw cut that we've just done. So I've got something about here, something further over, add a bit more support, stop anything moving. So let's just run down the other end. We're going to do exactly the same. Now again, I can have a quick look. Got to come over a bit more there. One there. So they're just filling that gap a little bit. So in reality, when I cut through the board now, on here, I bring myself back in. Got that curve. Going there, got that bend. If I cut it without those little wedges, it's going to collapse. As I start to come down the length and pinch on the blade, by putting the little wedges on underneath, that's going to support it stop it collapsing so run back down here we need those though oh okay good all these things to remember in there oh, okay right hold up 2060 That's good. Don't think I can get any more. That's maximum cut. Okay, good. One more cut in reality probably to do because the bit of board that the guide rail is covering is too wide to go for the planer. Take those off. So how much can we have? Just gonna balance that there. Grab our tape again. 10. That's about 10. We could go with a 10 inch board. A bit of a crack in here. 9. If we cut it 10, we know we can plane it. We can always make it narrower. Now I've got a straight edge on the left hand side down through here now. So let's just have a look at. I can lay the guide rail on. I can assess where the cracks are. 70 mil there run down the other end move that over to 70 that's quite good let's check an overall 10 inches it's a good guess wasn't it trying to get maximum out of this we can work around those cracks a little bit and see what we get we can always trim a bit more off it's not as easy putting it back okay so we can rip down those and if you think about what i've just done looking at the board putting the guide rail on Kind of looking at where can we cut it. How are you going to do that with your table saw? How are you going to... You've got to draw a line on the board. And try and then manhandle it down through. Not as easy to do. So this is quite a nice way of working. Having something propped up. Clamped in place. I can adjust stuff. Quite easily. All right, good. Got that one in. Let's move the tape from there. Get our saw. We can come from that far end again. We can reset the depth. About halfway will be good. One. Just having a quick look down through, see where the wedges are. Balance things out a little bit, stop it pinching too much again. That end looks good. Got to run down to the far end. Have a quick look in here. This one should be good because they're closer together, that's fine. That tape is more on that far end.
So I'll do that cut in a minute then. We'll go back to that thing one. I don't know. I expect it could do a service probably. So. Yeah. Yeah, not me. I'm beyond there. I can't figure out why it's. So we'll go into there then. Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So we can get that last bit here then. Okay. So hopefully. Let's just undo the guide rail. Even noticing as I've gone down through there, how the board's collapsing a little bit, pinching on that saw blade a little bit. Far end, which I don't know if you'll really see on the camera. This cut's closed up quite a bit. Not as wide there. Oh, got that thin line we know we've got to take out. Carefully bring it over. There's one. Said it would go, didn't we? And then the other one, up on here. Make that off. You can just see me in the camera there, this is good. Yeah, it's going to create a little bit of a ragged edge here. We've got a surface plane. We could have flipped the boards over and ripped down them again from the other side. But I'm hoping that will work nicely. That's the bit we don't want for a minute. That one in there. Put the waste bit out of the way. So the waste bit, as we said, has that taper. Trying to cut as much as that heart shake out. So we can lose some of that. So it won't be in the tabletop. That'll be good, right. Gently put this one out of the way. We can slide them down there. Let's move my blocks for a minute. I've got to assess the last one. So I'm going to cut the last one up. You don't need to see me do another board. And then we're going to start the planing for you. And we're going to show you how we can surface plane to get it flat. So we'll see when we're ready for that. So, having cut all the wood up with the saw, now we've got to do is plane it up. Oh wow, so it sounds such an easy task. Um, long lengths make things more difficult. So you can kind of see you've got roller stands set up. Uh, I've got those out, I've got one on the in-feed side, one on the out-feed, just really take the weight. And they take a little bit of setting up. Need to adjust the heights carefully. In fact, my heights are probably just a little bit low than where the tables are. So they will help support it whilst I put the wood on. But I don't want them being too high. That's going to affect what we get to cut. We create a banana shape in reality. We don't want that. We want it straight. So as long as I can keep my pressure over the planer, get the weight, should be pretty good. So, planer we've seen before, we've got spiral block planer, uh, we've got our cutters, fence, we've got a few things just going to check and do on here. So first thing, just going to grab some blue paper roll. I want to reduce the amount of friction that I've got to force the wood along. So, in here, got some machine wax. Even though on surface mode, won't hurt just to wax that table. All right, in and out, so let's do that one on there. This will help things glide nicely, run down the other end. A little bit more wax. We're going to do this when we do the thickness of mode as well. But for a minute, let's buff that table out. A bit of wax on there will work nicely. Put the wax back out the way for a second. Then we can go the blue paper towel, buff that up. So this will help the timber glide across the surface. People say to me, does it really make a difference? Definitely. Especially on the thicknesser. But I want to reduce the drag I'm getting off the planks. They're a bit heavy. So it won't hurt to do. Doesn't affect the finish or anything. That's other questions I've had as emails from people over the years of will it affect how I put my finish on? No. Nope. And nice and safe, you can use it. Table saw, planer, 
we used it the other week on that lathe maintenance video. So we're looking at that'll be better. Nicely done. Good. Wexed out. So our piece of timber. I've got this. So I'm already kind of assessing what's going on. It's got a little bit of a cup. I'd expect to have something there's a little bit of gap here. It's quite a long length. I could do that thing of let's have a quick look down. So hollow down through there. This side, not too bad. So this is quite flat. Then we've got a little bit of a hollow where it's dried. Probably a little bit of twist. And I'd expect it to have a little bit of twist because a tree will grow with a twist. If it grew dead straight, it tends to probably get blown over. So we put it on the planer so I can have a look. I've already started to judge which way up. This hasn't got too much cupping, so it's going to be good. Whilst I've got the square, I want to check my fence. Now I can bring the fence in a little bit because this plank's narrower. Let's come into about there. I'm looking down the line to check my fence is square to the table. Worth doing, and with a good square. So before you start your planing, definitely worth checking. There's nothing worse than getting all the way through the job and then realising you haven't planed it quite square. So, that's done. Down to the other end, got to grab the earmuffs and the goggles. So just putting those on, just going to turn the extractor on. But let's do that in a sec, let's start us off. So first thing I want to do, just going to have a look at what I've got. I've got a bit of twist this end. Okay, we've got to bring the bridge guard up a little bit. I've got to try and balance that twist out. It's right on this end, which is a bit of a pain, but it will go. I'm just trying to see where it is, how much, and where my pressure comes back to. So, if I've got my pressure too much on here, I'm going to rock it. If I can bring it back and keep it stable, we're going to balance it out. So even before I've got the machine on, I'm starting to look at what's going on, where is it, what have I got to tackle. Right. I might even, when I start, bring it up over the front on the outfeed table. So I just lifted it up, take a cut across the middle a little bit. It's just knowing with this, and again, just going to have a quick visual. Let's see if it's better. The other side can be worth turning things over occasionally just to see what's going on. Okay, that's actually a bit nicer there, so we're going to go that way up. So just that simple thing, put it on the table, rotate it, play around with it. You're going to see if it will work in better positions. All right, so hopefully you can have a look and play, see what's going on, okay? Right, okay, we're going to start the machine. So let's move the plank back, actually. Going to bring the bridge guard back over. Going to go turn this on. Press power for the extractor. And nice and flat for a minute. So the in feed roller stand is taking the weight for me. We're cutting, I think, about a millimetre. So we're bouncing along now, a little bit of the saw cut. So come over now. Out feed roller stand's taking some weight. That's good. One. Start to clean it up. Let's go back. Oh, lift it up all the way over. So we keep moving. Again, trying to keep the pressure equal. The advantage with the spiral planer, we've got lots of little teeth, not one blade coming round and hitting. So at three places, so lots of teeth doing those cuts, makes it less aggressive, makes it more controllable, actually makes it quieter. Again, not trying to feed too quick, that wax is doing its job nicely, helping things glide. Oh, I 
Three. Good. Let's have a quick look. I think you can probably see where we are now. We've got a smooth bit, got a little bit in this corner. The rest of it's quite good. Now we could do this bit. We're going to turn it round. Put it back on. Again, not too quick down the cut. Allow it to cut and allow the stock to be removed. If we force it too quick, so you're going to bounce over the cutters a bit. So it won't be affected. So, still feeding through. My weight's actually over in the table. Right hand, left hand's helping balance it. The roller stands doing that really important part of taking the weight for me. All the way through, that felt good. Let's have a quick look, I'm just going to flip it up. We've got a nice edge all the way down through, nice and clean all the way down through here now. So, let's have a quick look down there. Just checking the edge where we had that saw cut. Nothing on there as a lip, which is good. Not a lot in it edgewise, they're quite parallel. Carefully got to swing this about. We're going to do the edge. So, uh, just going to turn the extractor off for a second. Alright, so let's just drop this down. We can open the bridge guard. We need about two inches. By dropping it down, it makes it easier for me to get in here. Next important bit, I've got to make sure my roller stand is taking the weight behind me. I get my pressure on the side with my fingers. Now these fingers are pushing in towards the fence. My right hand's going to feed. Okay, so I'm trying to use this as a pressure block. So it's worth having that bridge guard nice in place so you get your hand lower if we need to. It could come down a little bit more. That's it. So I can get nice into there, feed it through. It's actually an important part of getting this bit. If not, if the plank's a bit out of square naturally, it's going to slip out and come away from the fence. We want to keep pressure back in there. So where did the saw cut yesterday? That might cause an issue because the board had a cup. We're cutting to a diagonal because how we got the saw on the top with that curve, all those things can play a problem. Right, just going to put the air on. Got the extractor back on, we've got that there, we're on. Put our earmuffs on. Into here. So that left hand doing a lot of work, right hand feeding. Again, that roller stand on the infeed taking my weight. Not going too quick, I want to remove the stock. I'm checking where I am on the tables. Checking we're not getting too much lift. Getting a little bit here. So we might have a little bit of a hollow in the middle of this. Just got to come down. Gonna pull along. So I said you've got a little bit of a hollow. Let's come back a bit. So I've lifted, put it down. I can lower it on the table there. We're not cutting. Come back a little bit there. Let's see if we get that one. So this will take the end off that hollow. Help make that straighter lift the whole thing up again now we're going to walk all the way back through again same approach fingers in the side gently feed along that's better all the way through all right. and again I'm checking the end of the fence that we're square let's just drop this over have a quick feel of what's going on that's pretty good so we're going to turn the air off so we've got a nice clean edge down through oh. just going to put him up on there so we're going to set up to do the thicknessing. Um, 
We've got the other planks still to play around with a little bit. So on here, we can leave the fence on. It wasn't very clever. Let's put that back in. We can put the bridge guard back. We can undo the two lock handles. One there, one down this end. Pull them out. Lift that up gently. This is quite nice to see in ways. You're going to say there's a lot of waste in here. But with it being spiral block planer, this is breaking this down into small particles so they weigh less. Still quite a lot in here. So much so, I'm just going to go do this. Let's give it a quick clean out. So I put the extractor on there. We've got to move the hood over in a minute. But let's lose that waste of shavings that are collected there before we do anything. We'll take the hood over now. Go to there. Checking where things are. I've got one other job still to do in there before we start thicknessing. We need our cloth. We need the machine wax. So get back in with this. I want to do that at lower table. Same reason, make things glide. So when we go to thickness, uh, the work will pull through nice and easily. So working down the length of it. If you've used a lot of pine on your thickness lately, it's worth cleaning with a resin cleaner. Get rid of that builder for gunk out the pine. That sticky nature won't help. Again, just buff that wax off. So at this stage, normally I try and do all of it, but we're not going to focus on all the planks for it. It's too much to show you in one big go. So what do you do first? Do your thickness, put it in flat? Oh, wow, that's heavy. Do we go flat or do we go up on edge? It's a question, isn't it? Now, what do you think about your answer? I've got to move a couple of things. So let's move the roller stands. Hoping I can manage without those now. So up on edge or flat, which way would you go? In reality, you want to work with the high spot or the length. So I've got 153 there, 150, about 150. So we're going to do that first. Uh, 158 there, let's bring it up. So I'm turning the dial, we've got a nice scale on the end here. Go to 150, Ooh, let's go two. Oh, just checking where things are there. So when I bring the board in, First thing that's really important, <laughs> your machine edge goes face down. Yeah, no, I've been there, done it. Got to go in. I can sit on the table and just check in length of. Going to support it. Now I'm naturally right-handed, so I'd hold this up. My left hand will sit on the top. We're going to feed in, which I've just done. Okay, so we've got to feed in. The anti-kickback fingers on the front of the machine will grip it. It should stop you pulling it out, so it will suggest I've got to bring this up a bit, but I think it's high in the middle. So that'll feed in, grip on the in-feed roller, that will pull it through. But I've got to keep a bit of pressure on here just to help support it. So let's drop that down, run over, do the extractor. We've got on, we can put Machine on, hands back on. So we're going to go up. So left hand supporting, feed in. Just start to grip on the rollers. So this is 152. Might take a little skim off the middle. We're going to see something. And feed out. Again, I'm supporting as I feed out of it. So if we come back, undo the lock handle, one the handle, I'm gonna come up a millimetre. Doesn't sound a lot, gotta get back over it, lift it up, 
can put it in support it feed in so I'm lifting a little bit it's connected onto the roll in there I'll gently guiding it in adding a bit of support that's showing something really long help the table again helping support it lifting it up very slightly do the same again so we put it down I'm going to step over it so get in here nicely lift up get it in here a bit of a squeeze I know what I've done look <laughs> I caught the hood so we're feeding in Nearly there. So again, back round. We've still got a little bit. So we take our cut up, just viewing down the plank, see what's going on. Just the front edge really, we want to get parallel. So gently feeding again, I'm working, supporting the board as we go. Tiny bit on the outfeed. Up to the outfeed side. Again, lifting up just a little bit, taking the weight of it. If I don't take the weight of it, the plank will drop a little bit when it comes off the outfeed roller within the machine. And that will cause a bit of snipe on the end. Still got a tiny bit this end, just want to clean that in, so gently up again. Feeding in nicely, just checking where we've got things. That's better. Now I've got that side done, I'm just going to flip it over. Now a few of you are saying you're not looking at grain direction. On this is a plank, the grain's going to be up and down quite a bit. Let's have a quick look though, the spiral cutter will give us a better result. But I am going to turn this round. So, want to clean up our surface planed edge now so we load it just to take clean cut this will be more controlled than I probably did freehand should give me a cleaner finish I'm taking off about half a millimetre good oh. We've got a set up for the other side now. So with obviously the table, I've got all the boards we've got to do. Okay, we've got to feed those through. So on here, now I've got to start to look at, and I need to measure down in here. So we've got the ruler. I'm just now looking at the board in a length. In the bottom corner here, ooh, 54 mil. Up here, I can visually see it's thinner. 44. 10 mil of difference, that's quite a lot. If I set this up wrong with 10 mil difference, I aim for 44, 45. The plane is not going to like it, believe me. Going to come to a bit of a grinding halt. So at this point, you've got to be quite accurate on your assessments. Now, we're doing one plank. I've got six to go for in reality for this. So if I did them all at the same time, I need to measure all of them. Find the thickest piece. Gradually bring the table up to accommodate all of them. All right, so we're gonna do one piece. It's, it's a laborious thing to watch on the camera, isn't it? So we've got this one. So I've said 54 down the bottom here. Let's have a quick double check. Measure twice, cut once, isn't it? Gently gonna bring that over. Wind this up, quite a bit to go, yep. Yeah. 
getting there. I think we go about there for a minute. Let's see what we get. So I'm turn that on. I'm going to turn the extractor on. Looking at what we've got. Again, got to lift it up. Go on the table carefully. Lifting the impede. Now it won't cut straight away because we've got that bit of difference on that end that's a bit thinner. Coming through, this is getting thicker this end. We might be a little bit high. That's good. That's a good place to start. Didn't take a lot. I've taken a minute bit off the side. Bring it up again. Gently on. Again, thinner on the out feed edge. Good. Let's turn them round this time. Still a little bit shy. Better. So taking a cut on the end. And as we said, there's still, you know, there's quite a bit of drop on this. So at the moment we're gradually coming up to that thinner bit of 44. There's one high edge you can feel across the width of the board. Tapers a bit. Again, right hands just supporting. So fingertips on the front, feeding in, keeping the pressure there. Taking a bigger cut now. And again, lifting on that out feed bit. Do it again. Going to step over, make it easier so I can see our scale. Come up a bit. Load it in. Deliberately coming a little bit high when I load, drop it onto the table. The other thing I naturally do is blow the shavings off the table when I get to doing the scale to remove anything. So I'm going to put my hands on there. Good. A little bit to go. Gently feeding in. Still got a little bit of scuff on the board down here, but not a lot. Tiny little bit. And a little bit on that edge. So at the moment we are at 43. I'm going to bring it up to there. I've got to get over it. I've got to be able to hold it. A little bit down here, we're chasing. Gently going through. Lifting up the far end, just add support. Quite a heavy piece of wood. Oh. Okay. I think, let's give him the other slip. Well, there you go. That's my workout for the day. I've got a few more to go, though. Um, Ben's sat here laughing. He, he, I've got to get into scroll saws, you know. Now, that's given us a nice, clean finish. Quite smooth all the way down through. No little chips or anything, which is good. Edges are now parallel. I've just got the others to do. So the next stage after this, once I've got them all machined, I get them the same thickness, glue them up. Okay? So... I'm going to continue with the machining. We'll see you when we do the glue up. That's the next little bit.
we've done all the machining. Mammoth task. It took probably about three hours in total to get everything from flat, square, thickness, down to size. Okay, so quite an epic project this to make a little tabletop. Next thing I've got to do is just go straighten the edges. As much as I've straightened them as well as we can on the surface planer and the thicknesser, need to adjust a few things, clean a few things up, get a better finish. So we need long triplane. The longer the better for this. That's going to help get something flat. The other logical thing, we're playing with seasoned English oak. Um, it's a little bit hard. Right, let's just have a quick touch up. Now I've done quite a few of the other boards. Uh, let's just put the plane back there. So I'm going to sharpen the blade. So we're going to use our scary sharpening board. You've seen this before. We've got 1200 grit, two and a half thousand grit. Our blade can go in. I'm going up to the side stop. And the limp stop, this is going to give me an accurate and repeatable 30 degrees. Could possibly come a little bit steeper than 30 with this being oak. But I've been playing around with 30, it looks right. Just going to do the other logical thing. Need these. Got to see it. What's going on? Make sure we're square. Check my numbers. That looks good. Tighten things up equally. Tighten one side more than the other. So let's just slacken off. Lock that up. Just checking where things they are. That looks good. Sit on there. Just going to get something to lubricate this with. So this is some home right mixed with some water. Onto there. Fingers and thumbs. Trying to keep our pressure nice and equal. So this is the 1200 grit. Two and a half thousand. And again, I don't need to do too much sharpening with this. The blade's relatively sharp. This is just a quick touch up. Keep things cutting nicely. So we're done on there. Got to do the back. That's just as important. So we should get something there. You probably see a little bit of shine on there. The back looks pretty flat. Last thing I want to do, take the bearer off. So I've got leather strop, honing compound. I'm going to pull it towards me. So I drop down, raise it up to feel where that sits nicely. If I turn that round, we can use the plank to the advantage. Look, there you go. Draw it along. I've got to create just a little bit of space. I want to do the back as well. This is going to get rid of any micro bear that I've left, that little bit of wire edge. Feels sharp. Now we've got to set things back up. Uh, bring the plane in. <sighs> Clean the dust out. This is a bevel up plane, so low angle smoother in reality, but longer size. Check things work at this stage and we've got it in there correctly. So I can wiggle the adjustment round, checking it's seated. Cap iron bit. Can come on the top to there. Now we need to check where we've got things. Shouldn't be too bad. I can see the blade's a little bit to the left, so I'm equaling it up. Playing around with a scrap block now just to see where things are cutting. I can move that up a bit. Cutting on the left, cutting on the right, which I've come up a bit too keen. Impatient. Do the same again. So bring it down. What I'm trying to do is find where it cuts equally. So I'm moving the lateral movement about on the right now. Just going to back the blade back. So this stage shouldn't cut. Other thing I want to do, I can close the mouth down. So on this is a plane, I've got a lock screw, I've got an adjuster on here. We can move this back. Where do we want to come to? Let's move the adjustment screw, which is this front one, in here. Can't quite see it there. Let's bring it round. I've got to change my grip. This one down here. All right, this is the lock bolt. Now we can undo that. I slide it back. And then undo there. We can come back a bit. So I've just closed the mouth up a bit. Just checking where things are. Lock it all back up. Next stage, put it up on here. Now, hoping this isn't going to cut. That's a weird thing, isn't it? You put it on here, you don't want it to cut. So if I just gently move it back and forwards, nothing happening. I've got the adjuster, wind the blade up. Tiny bit, 
Right, at the moment we're just cutting right hand side. We're going to move the blade over a touch. I'm trying to check things are cutting quite equally or in the middle. That won't hurt. So just that simple thing of putting it on there, no cut. See what happens, okay? Quite important for this. Now, definitely you need to have a really sharp blade for this. As I've said, it's oak. The grain's also going different directions, so the low angle plane will cut that a lot easier than something higher angle. Give me a bit more control, it's like a giant block plane. The longer length is gonna help me maintain the straight edge I want. Gotta try and balance things. Now, hopefully we've got a square edge off the machine plane already. We just maybe need to dress it a little bit, take off those little ripple marks, clean out any bits of grain. Down the far end here had tiny bit that like splinter edge, so I've super glued that down. Packed it up with a little bit of shaving to fill that gap. No one will know, don't tell them. Okay, so what we gotta do now, we're gonna plane down through, so I've gotta come right down to the far end. I'm gonna sit the plane on. I think you can just about see me, I'm there. Let's move the hone right. So sit it on, I'm gonna back it back in a minute. I've gotta get my hand position right. So with this, I'm using right fingers and thumb, go on the side. Okay, so there, we're gonna gently come down to the far end. Again, not in a hurry, walk through. Trying to keep my pressure equal. Left thumb's pushing down on the front, you can see that. Come along, move, go through. Look at that, isn't that lovely? If you wanted to make things glide easier, which I haven't got that much resistance, a little bit of candle wax will help. Now, I'm gonna come back down to here. Again, we put it on. All the way down through. Again, trying to keep the pressure nice and equal, trying to keep it square, check what's happening. We can get a little square, we put it on, we can see where we are, try and use a little bit of light. I tell you, this is difficult holding the plank up and trying to use the, the light off the ceiling, so I've got to go that way. We're not bad there, that's good. I'm just going to come right down to the far end, give myself a guide of what's happening. That looks good. So back in, we'll do one more. This is giving us a smoother finish than we can get off the machine planer. And just reality taking the high spots off. We're taking quite a thin shaving. This end got a little bit of rough, so I'm trying to pay attention to it. Chances are with the machine planer, you'll create a slight hollow in the plank, ideally. But it doesn't always happen. That looks good. Beautiful shavings. So from there, Let's go see how it fits together with the rest of it. So I've done the rest of the board. So take a bit of effort, take a bit of work. We'll show you how much effort maybe in a minute. So I'm gonna lift this out. Gotta go for a walk now, gotta go careful now, because I've gotta come all the way around the bench, down past you, and then we're gonna go to the layout bench a minute. Check my numbers. Gotta turn the plank round, so bear with me. Each of the boards I've numbered to give me a guide. I can drop it in. Now, on this screen you've got at the moment, you should be able to probably see everything else. A couple of sash clamps, they're just pinched in really light. I put a couple of bits of plywood in underneath the ends just to stop me marking. So I planed up some of this yesterday. The aim with the plywood, is pinch it together. The reason for clamping it, stop things moving about a little bit overnight, try and control things. That's the sequence they're going in. And on here we've got a little bit of a gap. We can actually use that spring gap. There is a technical term for it, but at the moment, let's just have a look. As long as I can squish this together, and I'm not using too much clamp pressure at the moment, just trying to see what happens. Get that one square. I can line things up. Glasses back on, start to assess what's going on. Does it come up nicely? I'm a little bit high here with the two boards. That will create a shadow line. I need to check it. Pull that up. So they pinch together nicely, nice and smooth. Got a few natural cracks in here. We, we know about those. We're going to play with a bit of super glue, some wood dust later. But hopefully you can see how that's pulled together nicely. So even though we get that little bit of spring pressure, that's not going to hurt. Not massive amount of spring pressure. I can pull it together. I can do most of it by hand. Might go back and take a tiny bit off the far end, which has got that wild bit of grain, which has got a bit more resistance but hopefully looking good. Right, just gonna go back over to the main bench. So I said to you, takes a bit of work. 
just bear with me. This was yesterday afternoon for you. All right, get a few more. Aren't they lovely? Nice big pile of shavings. That's giving you the scope of how important that plane is. Clean things up, get it flattened off, dress out any problems. I mean, they look gorgeous, don't they? I mean, people keep trying to steal them. So, got a plane blade, sharpened it. Keep it sharp and touched up. You're going to get a better finish. The grain down on those planks, a bit up and downy. So you can't always cut with the grain. So you've got to make sure it's nice and sharp. Next stage from here, you can get the biscuit joint out. Going to do some biscuit slots. Then we start the big glue up. All right. So get ready for the next few bits. We'll see you in a minute. So, okay, we've got all the boards planed. Ready to go. We've got a biscuit joint them now, and that's going to add a bit more strength. So it's a biscuit joint. In reality, we're going to put in a small section of timber. These are about three and a half mil thick. I've seen how these are made. They're punched out. It's quite amazing. All in beach, but they're actually cross grain. So the grain direction is going a bit that way. All right? A bit difficult to show you. So actually, the best way you can see that, you snap them, they will always snap at a funny angle. So you've actually got lengthwise, but not totally parallel. That's done for a reason. That's quite an amazing thing to think about how they make them. Then they also compress them. They go through some rollers. That actually makes them a bit thinner. So when the glue goes in them, they swell up, gripping the joint nicely. So quite an easy way of doing a joint. So we've got an Amano biscuit jointer. I've already set up our side fence. So we've got a scale on here. I've got 40 mil as a plank to about 19 mil to give us a center point for there. Do think about doing a double row of biscuits, but you've got to be really accurate, okay? And if you get anything out, there's nothing more frustrating when you come to glue it up. Good surface area on here with the oak and good glue, gonna hold it together. If you think about, I've seen tables made two, 300 years ago, they just glued together. They didn't have biscuits, so this is just a benefit, okay? So we've got our biscuit jointer, we've set it up. We've got our depth set, but I just check that. We need a 20, so we can bring that round to there. That'll give us full depth. Okay, so there's a scale I can move that about. We get different size biscuits, so a zero is the smaller, 10, 20 is the larger. So, we've also got the extractor on there, really important part. Why do I want the extractor? First of all, keeps me safer, less dust in the air, keeps Colwyn safer, less dust for him, he's looking pleased about that. Also, the fact stops the shavings and the wood dust coming out and clogging in behind the fence and then changing your accuracy, if you like. So it can be worth thinking about, got to have an extractor, okay? So I'm just going to put that out of the way. We're then going to go and look at the planks of oak. They're right over here. So I'm going to go under there, round to the boards. So on the boards, I've got one single clamp just really to hold this together whilst I mark it out. I've already marked them all out. I've got my roller. I've got a line. I've come across them. They're every 12 inches, okay? So... That will give me a good scope of, and they're all parallel across the board. And nice and accurately done. Quite large lines, quite deep in colour. Make them apparent. There's nothing worse than getting it mistaken for something else you've scribbled on there. All right, so got that. We can undo clamp. So the clamp really is on there just to stop things moving about while I mark them all up. Got our board, I've got our lines. I'm gonna take that. I've gotta come back round to the camera. I've gotta make sure I get the right ray for what I want. Gonna come in past there, back into our vice. The far end of the vice on the bench, I've got a cork sanding block just to act as a cushion block to sit this on so it keeps it nice and level all the way down through. Pin it up. So we want to cut them. Now, I've had problems in the past and I was oohing and oohing about how we do this on the video. I want to be upright. It can be a little bit wiggly up on here. So, something like quick grip clamp, I can get in under, clamp it up. Now that might take just a little bit more time, but actually it's gonna give me more accuracy. Now I've done biscuit joints in the past and found where I come to sand the boards, things are out discrepancy wise, not quite lining up. I can spend more time sanding. So this might be beneficial to think about clamping the biscuit joiner on for each of those cuts as you work down through should get a better finish. Less movement, you can be more accurate. More accurate with this can mean less cleaning up later. So all those things hopefully will add up. So, went down to there, got to plug the biscuit jointer in. I get my glasses. We've got to change where we are because I bet I wasn't very accurate where I dropped that on. 
I'm going to come down to the first one. Down in there, I've got a scale in the middle of the biscuit jointer, which tells me the center point. I'm lining up, trying to be nice and accurate. Get that quick grip clamp and put it on. Got to make sure I don't lift it. Made that look fiddly. Now the reason for going the quick clamp, it's easy to do up. You've just seen I can move it about. I can then stand back up, switch on, move that down. One, three more. That's that's up. One slot. We move down three. Then position it. As you can see, the hoover's got rid of all the waste. Nice clean slot, what we just cut. Again, clamp it on, try and make sure I don't lift it. On. Check my line, right on a knot there. So let's just make sure we line up. That's good. Pin them in. Along to the next one. Get my clamp in place, just looking at my pencil line. We're good. Do it up. Not that point. Bit over my line, so I've got to come back. That's good. Put the clamp on, check we're not moving anything. A little bit over. We'll come back. That looks good. Running out of cable length, so we'll get the hose in a minute and move the cable as well. Good on there. Put the extractor back on, you're seeing it's doing a really good job, so worth having it on there. Just double checking. Two to go. Locate it, gotta come over to my right a little bit. Last one. Gently undo, take them over. Don't know if you'll really see them on the camera. You've got your little line, okay. Obviously our biscuits are all gonna go in. Push in there, got a fluff fibre on the end, let's lose that. They can compress later and cause more problems. But you can see how quick and easy we can biscuit there. We've got to do the same with all the other boards. Work across the line. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Quite a few then. Okay, so we've got quite a few holes I'm gonna punch in. The clamp thing, such a good way of working again. No movement, top and bottom. More equipment is switched on, no jump. So it's gonna actually hopefully save me a lot of time, especially when I come to glue up, get things dead level. Definitely with the sanding. Doesn't take long, quick and easy to do. All right, so that's our biscuit joints done. Going to go through, get, obviously get the others cut. Next little bit, we're going to go, how am I going to glue up? All right, so we'll have a look at that in a sec when I've done this bit. All right, so see you soon. Right then, having cut all the biscuits, the glue up thing. This can be stressful. I will say that this is a tabletop. It's like 1200 mil wide. There's six planks. They're pretty heavy at once. No. Years ago, I probably would have been brave enough and stupid enough to try. Why do I say stupid enough? Because there's nothing worse when it goes wrong. And then you've got to rip it down. Go through that plating thing again. Do the biscuits. So, 
kind of decided with this and looked at, maybe it'd be best to join it in pairs. They're easy to move. I can move them about. I can easily do it by myself. So that's a great idea. So clempwise, not as long as well. So that's a benefit. Obviously, as I get them joined together, yes, I've got to add longer clamps. This stage, I've gone with some heavy duty parallel bar clamps. Traditionally, if you'd said to me, I probably would have been a sash clamp fan. But if you've ever glued oak up, you'll know about the fact that if it touches the bar when you're gluing, everything goes black. And it takes a lot of cleaning out. These have these little plastic leaves that drop on. Let's have a look on camera term. It's just so we can see that. You're going to see them a little bit when we glue up. So that keeps the board away from the metal. That stops that blacking. All right. So quite a nice way of doing it. So we've got those ready. We've got our biscuits. We've got our silicon glue brush. We've got the board that we're going to do. On the far side, so I can talk my way through this, we have a softwood batten, which is nearest the front of the screen. That's in behind the clamps. That will stop marking the edge where the other biscuit locations are for the next plank. Uh, spread my glue on. We're using a PVA type glue. So this is type one two. Got a bit of open time. Yeah, I've got a little bit of work time. Still relatively warm in here. So that's something else that plays on my mind of trying to glue up too much in one go. The glue goes off before you've even got the planks together. That can be a nightmare. So we're just brushing our glue along. Don't want masses because hopefully we're going to squeeze most of it out. But we want to make sure we get good coverage. Quite a big project thing to try and go up. Just checking I'm not going to kick the stool over that I've got supporting the boards where we've been planing and doing the biscuiting. So that's next to my leg now. Gently work down. Quite a lot of glue. You could go if you had glue roller. That's a nice way of working. So in reality with these, I can glue them up as three pairs. All right, so it could be three sets, or I can actually start with this and gradually get wider, add on another board. And I'll show you the reason of thinking like that as we go through. Just about there with our glue. On the end. Let's come back in. I've got the biscuit slot facing me. Now the biscuits I've got, I tend to do this. I want to cover them. Next thing I've got to do is locate them accurately in line where our slot is. All right, I can wiggle them about. No one said we were going to stay nice and clean when we did this. Bit of glue in there. Put it in, check in my lamps. There you go. So I'm squeezing on each end of the biscuit to check they feel parallel in the slot they've got into. Move down the line a bit. Now you're starting to see why I said this is a, a big thing to glue up. If you think about trying to do this with six boards, eight biscuits, that's five, so that's 40 biscuits I've got to do. Going to take a bit of time. And the same thing is, I've seen people do it. We over the years where I can remember one guy from college where trying to glue up too big a thing in one go. We could have glued it up in stages, but oh no, we have a good good glue up. We end up having to take the piece of furniture apart again. Not as easy as it sounds. So break it down. We're done with our glue. I'm going to want just a little bit now, so you have enough on here, just to brush edges of those biscuits. So you can probably see those sticking out. I'll glue, glue this end already, starting to tack a bit. We've done one board, wow. So our clamps we've already got in place and underneath. I can drop this in, get my glasses. want to line up the pencil lines nice and accurately. Come down the far end, got to go. That way a bit. Going to start one clamp. We've got a nice big head on these. As I've said, we've got this batten on the far side. I'm lifting up and down. That's adding a bit of softening, if you like, so I don't mark that biscuit length or that edge. I'm lining up with the biscuit now. Wiggling this clamp about. Pull it in. Not doing fully up at the moment. 
just working along. Next one. That one needs to come back off. Bit out of movement, but now I've done that, I can push it up. Finger wise, let's just see what's happening here. Now the other advantage with working like this, we can control things. We've got those plastic bits in underneath that are keeping it up off the clamps, trying to get us equal. I've only got two boards, so therefore I haven't got so much risk of things cupping across the width. Just going to line up the clamps to go on the top. There's one there. These can go intermittent between what you've got. This one between the two biscuits, here and here. Midway, that'll pull pressure. Again, not done it up yet, just working along. And do uh, the clamp heads just to make sure we've got movement on the winder. Good. One to go, bring that back into the far end. Position those plastic stops, if you like, that keep everything up off the board. We'll see them a bit more on the far end in a sec when we come down to there. Just got to undo the mechanism on this one to bring it back. Push it up. Okay. Let's start there and we'll come down to the other end. Checking with my fingers, things are flush. You can't quite see them. I'm looking here, how things feel. Right at the end can be problematic because I've got nothing clamping the very end. So I've just got clamp. F clamp, let's bring it into here, we can see what we're going to do. I've got a step just on there. I can use that to bring things level. I can tighten that clamp. M1 feels pretty good there, going to bring things up. I'm trying to tighten one above, one below, work down through. What I don't want to do is tighten up all the bottom ones. That will cause the boards to cut. Push up in the centre. I'll we'll work down the line. If I can get this one just in. Got to undo them a bit, that's better. Clamp them up. I got there, small step. So I'm using F clamp that I can get into here. And again, that's an advantage maybe of just doing the two. I can pull that back down. So if I get any discrepancies in between the biscuits, I can work on it. One above, one below, one above again. Got to undo, clamp a bit move those supports back in just to add a bit more balance if you like just bring the clamp up tightening them in now just up one there got the last one down the end now, I expect you can see the little plastic bits that we can move these about so we can get support either side we're not touching the glue so we're not going to get any black staining I can do it up again I can play my fingers here nice and level Work back down them. Got a bit loose on that one, now I pulled everything back in. Move our mechanism right back. That's better. Gently squeeze that. I can even crank the handles on these a little bit. It's better we have a look there, you can see it nicely. If I bring this round, I can bring it up. Oh, get a bit of leverage. Don't need much. I'm just going to finger tight and go down them. Just double checking everything now. Things are tight. Fingers. What's happening on the join point? Is there any big steps? We're pretty good. That was the bit I didn't like, but I mean, that's minimal. Wow. So that we do of using the clamp with the biscuit jointer. Such a great way of working. It took three or four minutes longer. But everything's level. No heavy sanding to do, hopefully. So good down for there. Last little bit. Should probably use some warm water we could go with. Let me just grab it. Oh. So we can scrape ahead, we can scrape this off on the glue. We can get to the top. Do you think the clamps actually raise up in underneath? I can even get my hand in underneath and wipe off that excess glue. So if I want to get in there I can, unlike a sash clamp where you haven't got that height. So, so much better for a clamping operation. Pulled it together, nice and flat. Just got the others to do now. So, we'll get those done. This is the tabletop one we've probably done totally. We're showing a few weeks time. We've got a few other things we've obviously got to get glued together. Go cut it to lumps. That'll be Festal Guide Rail Saw. That's quite an easy one. So we glue it together. 
going to have to play around with a few flaws and defects in there. So we've had a look, going to use possibly some epoxy, some bark. We'll have a look and let you know. All right, but you'll see the finished top when we're done. Hopefully you've enjoyed. All right, um, quite a difficult project for me because it's quite a big thing. To give you an idea, this has gone on over three days now. So we've actually got the machining, the cutting the planks down, get it all to this stage. It all takes a bit of time, but that's the relevance of what we're trying to show you. All right, hope you've enjoyed. Give us the thumbs up. We'll see you again for more Woodworking Wisdom. Bye then.